Hello and welcome to my astrology channel. If you are new to this channel, my name is Mantis and I do videos on natal astrology and relationship astrology. So if you like this video and you would like to hear future videos from me on similar topics, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell to see when I will upload the next one. And also if you are interested in a personal consultation on any topic, please email me at the email that I will write in the video description. So thank you and I want to make, I, so today I wanted to make a video uh, in continuation with my Venus through signs series and I finally decided to do the Venus and Capricorn um, description. So Venus and Capricorn. Capricorn is cardinal Earth, and it is ruled by Saturn, and Saturn and Venus are friends. So already you are pretty much in good company here. Um, what what does it mean that Saturn and Venus Saturn and Venus are friends? First of all, they're both feminine uh, planets, and they will help each other in such a way that um, this will be a beneficial expression for both of these planets. Um, so, people with Venus and Capricorn. Capricorn is... Uh, just a few more details about Capricorn. It is the sign that rules things like old age. Um, it rules things that stand the, pa the test of time. Um, sustainability, durability, uh, it also rules hardships, it rules the climb for social status, for professional advancement, um, everything to do with um, basically achieving something in a professional sphere. And uh, it also rules fear to uh, a large extent. So uh, any kind of fears are actually ruled by Saturn. So just bear this in mind when I am continuing with the description. And then Venus, like as you know, it rules sugar, spice, and everything nice. And it is the planet of what you love, what you value, your, um, your style of loving in romance, in romantic relationships. It also sheds light on the type of partner that you are attracted to, especially if you're a man, because for a man, Venus is the wife archetype, but also for women as well, to some extent. Um, so yeah, that's all the things that Venus rules. So Venus and Capricorn people, they love everything um, to do with durability. So they love things that will stand the test of time. They will be interested in things like Subjects like geology, things like paleontology, even archaeology, definitely. Um, you know, all of these things that have to do with unearthing, you know, some old things, vestigial things, historical artifacts. Uh, all of these things are something that a Venus and Capricorn person would be naturally attracted to. Um also, especially if they have um, some 8th house Scorpio placements, they will also, they will love things like, uh, you know, those TV shows like uh, Bones or Dr. G, where they analyze, you know, bones, literally, because also Saturn rules um, the skeleton in medical astrology. So, yeah, basically everything that you know, is the bare foundation of anything is ruled by by Saturn. And also, Venus and Capricorn can show a person that can really achieve in pretty much any artistic uh, field simply through sheer perseverance and hard work. Um, and they will be drawn to, because remember, Capricorn is the sign of career. It's the sign of social status. So people who have Venus in Capricorn, 
uh, might be naturally attracted to artistic fields because Venus rules arts, um, especially music and things to do with the voice, but not just. So they will be interested in artistic fields. So, and uh, also because, you know, Capricorn is everything to do with uh, father time and standing the test of time and hardships and uh, things that are thorough, you know what I'm saying? Um, also because of that, it tends to uh, give a person a long-lasting career. So, if especially in the arts, um, you can see this placement actually, I think, with a lot of people who are famous artists and they have had very long standing careers. And this is, again, um, this is because simply because Capricorn people are, or any planet in a Capricorn, in the Capricorn sign, will be very thorough. Uh, they will like things to be. You know, quality, again, because they love things that stand the test of time. Um, things like the Taj Mahal, you know, <laughs> a person with Venus and Capricorn would love things like that. Or, you know, those statues on Easter Island, you know, things like that. And also, uh, Venus and Capricorn is, they will appreciate things that are hard to get. They will appreciate a challenge. They they don't want things handed out to them. Like a person who has, let's say, Venus in Pisces or Venus in Sagittarius, which are both ruled by Jupiter, a person like this might really appreciate, you know, some handouts. You know, like, hey, like you just won the lottery or hey, I like you, so here's a hundred dollars and go buy something you like. You know, they will enjoy that. They will be like, thanks, super cool. Uh, whereas a person who has Venus in Capricorn, they will really value uh, things that are achieved through hard work. And because they can only value things that are achieved through hard work and perseverance, they might actually not be attracted to things that are too easy, you know, that are easy to get, or they will not want an easy life. They're used to working for their money. Um, unless there is some influence there like Jupiter or Rahu influencing Venus, maybe, or any of the money houses, like the second house, maybe, or the fifth house, um, but or the eighth house, or the seventh house. Um, but generally, this placement, these are the kinds of people who want to work for, for the money that they make. So they really want to earn, they want to be seen as self-made. You know, that's what they admire. And they also admire seriousness, discipline. Um, so they they will, you know, a person with Venus and Capricorn, these are their values. So they will value discipline. They will value hard work. Um, they will look for these qualities in a partner, especially the man with uh, this placement will really appreciate a woman who is hardworking and even career oriented. Like you're probably not going to find any men with, this placement that are uh, keen on, you know, having a typical housewife, <laughs> you know, I mean, again, unless maybe there are other placements, like maybe he has moon conjunct Venus, then maybe he will want a housewife. But most likely, and I've actually, I know like two or three men who have this placement and uh, they all uh, make it pretty clear that they are not against feminists and that they actually appreciate women who are, um, you know, driven and ambitious and serious and mature. So, yeah. Being an earth sign, you know, so Capricorn is cardinal earth. So like Taurus and like Virgo be before them, um, Capricorn is a sign of great sensuality, like they enjoy the finer things in life. They, it is a very feminine sign, actually, even though it, you might think of it as harsh and cold. Um, it is a feminine sign. So people with Venus and Capricorn, they do have an appreciation, an appreciation for everything to do with the five senses, um, and they will have a strong inner sensuality. However, in romance, they will be attracted to, again, things that stand the test of time. So they will not waste their time on a relationship that is shallow, 
um, that uh, they don't see, you know, developing in the long term, that doesn't serve their overall development, maybe professionally as well. Um, so they will not waste their time on frivolous, uh, frivolous pursuits generally. Again, unless there are other heavy influences there, like, I don't know, Jupiter conjunct Venus, maybe to some extent might loosen them up. Um, or especially Rahu conjunct Venus, that might uh, make a person, you know, kind of flaky and jump around from one relationship to, to the next. Um, but otherwise, Venus and Capricorn, these people are interested in long-term relationships. So they're most likely to take uh, commitment seriously and... Um, this is also why they will be attracted to older partners. I have mentioned this in um, the video I made about the um, older or younger spouse, you know, what is the archetype in a person's natal chart. So, and, and I've mentioned there, like, uh, that people with Venus and Capricorn, as well as other um, uh, partner dispositors in the natal chart, uh, so any partner, dispositor, Venus, ruler of 7th house, Darkarka, etc. There are several, I've listed them in the video. Uh, if any of these are connected to Saturn, a person is going to be more attracted to an older partner. So, yeah. Oh. Let's see, what else? Yeah. Also, their aesthetic sense is going to be like Saturn would suggest. Uh, these are actually, if I would have to bet, they, they are the kind of people that are most likely going to be into the current of minimalism. So they don't want to be wasteful. They don't, uh, they don't like, they actually are naturally frugal. Um, they don't want to waste too much money on trivial things that they don't use. Also because... Um, Capricorn is the most pragmatic sign, you know, they don't want, they don't waste too much time or money on things that they see as frivolous and, like, too many embellishments and gaudiness and, uh, um, just, you know, frills, like, <laughs> nothing extra, like, for these people, they don't necessarily care about all that, they only care about you know, the bare necessities or Mother Nature's recipes. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, let me see. So, yeah, they will, I would say that they are more likely to be into minimalism than any other, maybe, Venus placement. Um, and they, subsequently, because they are frugal and because they're very conscious when it comes to how they spend their money and uh, resources, how they use resources in, in general, they will be very environmentally conscious. Um, they don't care about energy waste. Uh, they might be the ones, the type that enjoy things like composting, uh, you know, having their own solar panels if they can, anything to do with uh, sustainability. Because again, sustainability has to do with father time. Because it's about how long you can maintain a system, a well-functioning system. So, Venus in Capricorn, in terms of hobbies, I would say this placement is definitely going to create a crystal collector. Like, you know those memes where, like, you know that meme where... Uh, there was uh, there was a character from Gone no, there was a character from uh, Lord of the Rings and he was all covered in crystals and it said, uh, <laughs> "One does not simply walk by a crystal shop." That's that's like Venus and Capricorn absolutely. That's uh, if I would have to bet on that, they will be drawn to rocks in general like geology. Um, bones as well, so like, I would not be surprised if they enjoy artwork that is made from bones, ivory, stuff like that, maybe even, maybe not ivory, because ivory doesn't go so well with sustainability, but, you know what I'm saying, things that are made from bones, things that are, you know, natural, but without too many embellishments, without too much, um too many details or like too, too much opulence. 
Um, they will also be drawn to areas like the desert or any area that is kind of like, you know, harsh, cold, uh, maybe even the moon. I don't know. I haven't actually, I haven't actually <laughs> studied this. They might be interested in air travel. I don't know. But they will be interested in, you know, harsh climate, um, areas that are just dry without a lot of vegetation maybe um that are challenging basically so i would not be surprised to see a venus and capricorn person um enlisting in some kind of crazy triathlon or something to do with climbing rocks and you know in record time or or some kind of obstacle course that would be very venus in in capricorn him so they will like me they will like anything to do with ruins, with rocks, with bones. Um they would love some a place like Crete in Greece or the Samaria Gorge. Um and yeah, sports also like rock climbing and hiking, but especially in challenging areas. So Another thing that I can say about Venus and Capricorn is women with Venus and Capricorn, actually men maybe too, but I would say especially women, because again, like I mentioned before, um, women tend to really identify with their Venus and their moon placements, while men will tend to project their Venus energy onto the women in their lives. So I would say more for the women who have Venus and Capricorn, they will... Um, they will be naturally disciplined when it comes to their beauty regimens uh, because, again, it goes hand in hand with that interpretation that Capricorn is, Venus in Capricorn likes hard work, they like things that take discipline, effort, and Venus is the planet of beauty. So a Venus in Capricorn woman is the kind of woman that will find will find it most easy to impose some kind of a strict diet on herself or some strict um, exercise regimen on herself unless there are other more powerful placements that will overpower this but especially with like if you have venus conjunct saturn in capricorn especially if this is the ascendant if you have venus and capricorn in the ascendant this can make a woman definitely very hard working when it comes to pre you know preserving her beauty and um, working on looking her best and because i mean capricorn is all about stoicism basically it's about endurance so they will find it easy for instance to live without sugar without desserts without any extra things they might just live on porridge <laughs> for the rest of their lives if they if they feel like this is serving their long term term goals they will do it um so yeah unlike let's say venus and taurus who is going to be very indulgent <laughs> Um, so Venus with Cap Venus with uh, uh, sorry men with Venus and Capricorn, um, they will like older women. Uh, like I said, they will tend to either like women who are physically older, or they will like women who are definitely mature, financially independent, maybe professionally am ambitious. They will admire women like that. Like they will admire women who are you know business savvy and who own their financial situation they will definitely not be attracted to women who are too extravagant either in their behavior or in their expenses absolutely not they will want a woman who is sensible down to earth um knows how to balance a budget that kind of a woman and um ambitious and hardworking and disciplined and all that stuff and when it comes to physical appearance the men with these pl with this placement will be attracted to women who are tall lean who have a good bone structure uh you know like high cheekbones you know well-defined brow bones you know anything to do with good bone structure and slim 
yeah, I, I, like I said, like tall, slim, definitely on that side. And when it comes to their physical appearance, like I said, nothing extravagant. So they will appreciate women who keep it simple, tasteful, um, but are poised and emotionally controlled. Um, so that was the general description. So let me get into some famous examples. Taylor Swift has Venus and Capricorn conjunct Rahu in the third house, which is the house of efforts and business. Not surprising at all. Uh, it's the house of personal efforts, meaning the things that you do to make your own money. And with her, Venus and Capricorn conjunct Rahu is very telling because she makes her money out of music. And she also has a very... Um, first of all, she was very precocious with her career. She started really young, and her career has really stood the test of time. So, yeah, I would say that she's probably very hardworking. Um, Sharon Stone, Venus conjunct Mars in Capricorn in the sixth house, which is the house of everyday efforts, everyday work, uh, what you would have, what you will have to do in a profession on a day-to-day -day basis. And also daily habits and interests and, and um, things that you focus on a day-to-day -day basis. And she has Venus conjunct Mars there. So that's a very strong placement for artistic energy. And in Capricorn, which is the, you know, the placement for career. Also, another thing that I forgot to mention is one thing that I've noticed, but I'm not 100% sure. However, this is what I would say. Uh, based on what I've noticed, uh, people with a lot of placement, especially people with Venus and Mars in Capricorn, um, they tend to be sexually not that expressive. Like, uh, not not necessarily, I guess what most people would call repressed, but I, would, I wouldn't use that word. It's more like they channel their sexual energy into their career which uh, makes them maybe appear, you know, a bit cold, disinterested, workaholic. Um, however, that is not really the case. Like, Capricorn is really the planet of sensuality and all that stuff, but they need a person, a partner, who is up to their standards and who understands their needs and is patient and committed to building a relationship with them. Um, Oprah Winfrey has Venus conjunct, Sun conjunct Mercury, conjunct Rahu in the second house. I actually looked at her chart, and she, so all of these planets, so she has the ruler of 11th house, which is Venus, conjunct ruler of the 9th house, which is Sun, and conjunct the ruler of the 10th house, which is Mercury. All of these things, I think these form like some, something called wealth yogas, I'm not really sure, I don't remember exactly, like, I've read articles about this, but I'm pretty sure, like, if you have the 11th connected to the 9th house already, it's a wealth yoga. And connected to the 10th house, it's like, this is a huge, and all of this, not just all, of, like, she has probably, like, three wealth yogas in this multiple conjunction alone. I haven't even looked at the rest of her chart. Um, in the second house, which is the house of wealth, the house of material possessions and gains and it's also the house of family um which is kind of interesting because her father was abusive and she has son conjunct rahu i did mention the son conjunct rahu already like people with son conjunct rahu please don't curse me out <laughs> oh but you know what i said like i mentioned this conjunction is it tends to show like a troubled father figure so I've mentioned it in the serial killer video, and I think of the narcissist one as well. Um, yeah, but uh, in any case, in her chart, the massive, massive uh, wealth is shown through this multiple conjunction alone. So she has, like, ruler of the 11th conjunct, ruler of the, of the 9th, this is a wealth yoga. And then she has ruler of the 11th being in the second house, another wealth yoga. The ruler of the 9th being in the second house, another wealth yoga. And all of this connected to the 10th house, which is the house of her career. Then we have Jared Leto. Venus conjunct Rahu in Capricorn in the 5th house. 
fifth house, which is the house of creativity, creative expression, artistic expression. So again, very telling. And it's also the fifth house, um, not just artistic expression, but it's especially the house of dramatic arts. So yeah, it, clearly he chose to focus his his interests and his passion and his workaholism <laughs> into fifth house matters. And it's really telling as well because he's also a singer. He's in a band. So great placement for a singer as well who, as an actor. Bruce Willis, Venus conjunct Moon in Capricorn in the fifth house. Again, great placement for an actor. Fifth house, house of dramatic arts. Um, Moon there just heightens the need for professional success in fifth house related matters. Uh, because Capricorn is professional success and Moon is emotional needs, Venus is passions, hobbies, and all that stuff. Um, Ashton Kutcher, or Ashton Kutcher, I'm not sure what the, how it's pronounced. I'm guessing Kutcher. Uh, Venus conjunct Moon, conjunct Sun, conjunct Mercury, again, four planets conjunct in Capricorn in the ninth house. And all of the, this multiple conjunction is opposite Mars in Cancer in the third house. So again, this is, I haven't looked at all of his chart, although again, this multiple conjunction is definitely some wealth yogas here. Um, because it's connected to the ninth house. The ninth house is a house of wealth. And there are a lot of wealth yogas connected to this house. So I'm willing to bet that this man has at least a few wealth yogas going on here. And Mars and Cancer in the third house, the house of effort. So this, the, these placements alone will show somebody who has massive financial success. And also, it's kind of funny because, uh, remember, I did the video on older or younger sp a spouse, and he has Venus in Capricorn, and he was married to Demi Moore. So, yeah, he was, uh, he was or maybe is, still attracted to older women, or certainly women who are mature. Um, another example of Venus in Capricorn, Salman Khan, uh, Venus conjunct Mars in Capricorn in the 10th house. Again, huge amount of energy directed into the 10th house and definitely something that will show a person who has a tendency to have a long-standing career. Actually, I don't know if you've noticed, but all of these examples have long-standing careers. So, yeah, uh, in the arts, no less. Um, yeah, but Venus in the 10th house definitely will show um, a career with some kind of, connect to some kind of artistic field for sure. And having Mars there, and also Mars in Capricorn is exalted, which means very strong, very strong energy and effort directed into career matters. And the, another example and the final one that I will... <laughs> list for uh, Venus and Capricorn. Mel Gibson, Venus conjunct Mercury in the eighth house. Uh, conjunct Mercury, I can just say that, you know, again, this can explain interest in theater and dramatic arts because Mercury is the planet of communication and ideas. So he will definitely show he did show interest in, you know, artistically expressing himself. Okay, so then examples of people who have ascendant in Capricorn. Remember, I like to add these ascendant in signs uh, examples to give people with Venus in Capricorn an idea of the kind of people that they would find attractive. Um, because Venus, Venus tends to be attracted to people who have ascendant in the same sign. I will maybe make another video on that at some point, Venus conjunct ascendant, but I digress. So examples of people who have ascended in Capricorn, Barack Obama, ascendant conjunct Saturn conjunct Jupiter in Capricorn. To me, Obama actually always looked very Saturnian. Before I get into this, just a short description, actually. Um, Capricorn on the ascendant, 
I would say it's in a, some ways similar to um, to Sagittarius in the sense that it gives a elongated face and it gives a uh, tall stature above average in height for sure. But one thing that Saturn gives is it gives a bit of a harsher physical appearance and this is not just true for people with Capricorn ascendant but also and especially for people who have Saturn aspecting the ascendant especially people with Saturn conjunct or opposite the ascendant will tend to have this kind of um you know serious kind of harsh um but also very dependable aura you know like the kind of people that uh, other people will tend to trust easily and look at them as capable and and you know people who can get things done if you know what i mean like that that's the kind of energy that they give off and so i to me like i always thought barack obama looked kind of saturnian because he has that elongated face and it's also a bit bony you know like with jupiter you wouldn't describe a person with jupiter on the ascendant as bony or like having protruding features or like super sculpted features you know but people who have saturn on the ascendant you will see that they have these sculpted features like they either have a very sharp nose or they have an elongated thin jaw or um they will have like these dimples underneath or or these hollows under the the cheekbones you know things that will, or or they will have like uh, arched eyebrows and the eyes look kind of like deep in the sockets. And uh, all of these things give a kind of a harsher appearance, which is not to say that it makes a person less attractive or anything like that. Uh, it really, some people can actually be very good looking with uh, Saturn on the Ascendant. In, in its best expression, it can give a person with great bone structure. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Vivian Lee had Saturn conjunct Ascendant, and she certainly had that very positive expression of Saturn on the Ascendant because she was, like, slim and had very well-defined features, and she also aged well. So that's a positive expression. And also they tend to have somewhat thinner lips, I would say, than average. And when they are young, they tend to look older than their age, but as they age, they tend to look younger. Um, So enough with the parenthesis on general description. So yeah, Barack Obama has this, and David Bowie had it, had Ascendant in Capricorn opposite Saturn conjunct moon in the seventh house. So he has had a Saturn moon conjunction in the seventh house. To me, this really explains his physical appearance because he was like, uh, dainty. There was something a little bit harsh about his appearance, certainly very thin and almost brittle, like if you know what I'm saying, like that's the kind of uh, energy that Capricorn will give or that Saturn will give. It, it will give an almost like a person that is so thin that they look almost dry and brittle. Like, you know, and, and again, I don't mean for any of this to sound offensive or anything because some people can be very attractive. Like David Bowie, if you ask me, he was really good looking. I mean, uh, if you've seen uh, you've seen the movies he's done in the 80s um, and you know like yeah he was pretty fragile and pretty thin looking but he was also pretty good looking so yeah Jim Morrison had ascended in Capricorn conjunct K2 I mean K2 in the first house see with Jim Morrison like you don't really see that the harshness because he doesn't also have Saturn really aspecting the Ascendant. He just has Ascendant in Capricorn. And you see this with Sophia Loren as well. Like, Sophia Loren uh, has Ascendant in Capricorn, but I think, if I remember correctly, I'm not sure. Um, I think so. Maybe not. Maybe she has Ascendant in, Gem- in Sagittarius. I don't, okay, forget about Sophia Loren because I'm not sure. But uh, Jim Morrison, so if his birthright is correct, then he has ascended in Capricorn. And with K2 there, uh, I would not say that Jim Morrison was particularly thin, but he also, if you remember, uh, had really well defined cheekbones and a very well defined, almost chiseled jaw. Uh, so that would go hand in hand with the. Um, Saturn, Saturn influence on the physical appearance. However, not not extreme harshness like you would get with somebody who has Saturn conjunct or 
um, opposite the Ascendant. Orlando Bloom, Ascendant in Capricorn as well. Also, he has, if his birth time is correct, he also has um, Capricorn, he also has Ascendant opposite Saturn. So, yeah, again, Orlando Bloom was not somebody that I would characterize as harsh, but he is slim and thin lips and all that. The eyes are kind of like deep in their sockets. So that kind of goes hand in hand with this. I'm not sure if he has other influences on the Ascendant. This is just something that I noticed uh, with regards to Capricorn and Saturn. Another example, J.K. Rowling, Ascendant in Capricorn, conjunct Sun. With her, you can see the Sun influence because she is a blue-eyed blonde. Maybe not a natural blonde, I'm not sure. But with Sun, I mentioned this before, Sun and Moon, they tend to give light features. And she also has a kind of a, a lightly aristocratic, almost kind of countenance. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And also another fun fact that I noticed in her chart is that she has Jupiter conjunct Rahu in the fifth house. That shows massive fame connected to creativity. Yeah, creative expression. So goes hand in hand with her being a famous author. Uh, another example of Capricorn Ascendant is Kim Basinger, or Kim ba Basinger, I'm not sure how it's, I think it's Basinger, um, famous actress. Ascendant conjunct Rahu in Capricorn. Very good looking woman. Um, you know, very good bone structure again. She was naturally slim. Um, has the high cheekbones, the oval face, um, the somewhat serious, you know, look in her eyes and stuff. All of that kind of goes hand in hand with Ascendant in Capricorn. Nina Simone, Ascendant conjunct, Ascendant conjunct Saturn and Venus. If I have, can, if I have written this correctly, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, to me, uh, Nina Simone absolutely looks like uh, a Capricorn Ascendant. With her, it's actually more like uh, an energy than it is her physical appearance. I mean, her physical appearance as well is easily explained, especially if she has Venus there. Um, because Venus is like, it's beautifying everything that it touches. So nice, harmonious features, a bit more fleshiness than you would expect, a fleshiness, like plumpness that you would expect with a Saturnian influence. Um, nice curves and all that and a beautiful face, oval, are you know, well-defined, uh, harmonious features. And yeah, let me see what else do I have here. Abraham Lincoln, again, if his birth time is correct, because who knows. Uh, but if his birth time was correct, very telling placement. Sun conjunct Ascendant in Capricorn, also conjunct Moon. I mean, all of this is shown in his physical appearance. I, definitely, again, Abraham Lincoln is, is one of those people that I would have said even without looking at his chart, he must have some Saturn influence on the Ascendant because he looked very Saturnian. Like, he, you know, the, the he had a typical harsh appearance, you know. Um, like, the very pro prolonged face, the really kind of, like, father time, you know, harsh... Not father time, you know what I'm saying? Like, Saturn is, like, the harsh, authoritarian father figure. And that pretty much kind of went hand in hand with his appearance, especially having Sun there and Moon. Sun would give him even a more regal, royal bearing and a kind of uh, poise and uh, a natural authority uh, to his general personality and, and countenance. And as well, having Moon there, one expression of Moon is that it gives plump lips, uh, and it gives in men especially a kind of like a, um, a, a protruding jawline, like, but in a, not necessarily protruding in the sense that it's like really wide, but in the sense that it's just some somehow well defined or like it draws attention 
You know what I'm saying? And I think he had that, like, he had this kind of, like, a, uh, you know, well-defined jawline. And at least based on the images that are out there. Another example, Aaliyah had Ascendant conjunct Sun conjunct Mars in Capricorn. Again, with her, it's, like, pretty telling because conjunct Mars... Uh, very athletic, very slim body, but also very good looking. With Sun there, a lot of creative expression, definitely somebody with an interest in dramatic arts or being the forefront. Uh, it's funny because, like, um, Abraham Lincoln also has Sun conjunct to Senate, and a lot of people, like, uh, Sun actually in general and Leo is connected to things that put you in the limelight. So, um, it does rule things like dramatic arts, but it rules a lot of other things as well. It can rule teachers and politicians as well. So it's really telling in any case. And that's it. Like, wow, this is going to be a really long video again. Um, so thank you for listening if you've made it all the way to the end. And uh, once again, if you like the video, please like, please subscribe. Please hit the notifications bell. Um, I would love to hear from you in the comment section. Maybe give suggestions on any other videos that you might want me to make. Any topics you want to hear about. And also, if you want a personal consultation, please email me at the email that I will write in the video description. So, thank you. And hope to come with another video within a week or so. So, thanks. Bye.